viewers, welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. That's a 2009 Dodge Grand Carry Van. It's got the big 3.8 and every light in the dash is on. All the lights. Uh, ABS, engine, traction, ESC, elemental P's, and the ABC's. Uh, lady had another shop trying to get this thing to pass inspection. It's been out for several months. Uh, they keep clearing the code so she can drive it and then evidently it you know, immediately comes back on. So they said, what the heck, we don't know. Uh, send it here so we're gonna take a look see if we can help this lady out find out why the lights coming on and you know potentially what has the problem uh, she did tell me that there were several issues I'm trying to remember what they were she said her uh, hood ajar light was always on since she's owned it and the TPMS light so to ignore those two things but try to figure out uh, what else is going on here so we're gonna use the Y tech here uh, I know it's not ideal shining the camera at the screen but when I'm a little bogged down with work, sometimes it makes it easier. Uh, it's almost unbelievable, but uh, <laughs> so this is the topology of this vehicle. I let it ID, you see we're 09. Uh, what this tells me, anytime you see a module that's yellow that has code stored in it, blue is good <laughs> if you're a pilgrim, <laughs> and red means no communication. So that's interesting. Now, the lady did tell me that she's had, you know, a host of problems with this thing. You know, the battery's dead all the time, constant jump starting, and the code clearing, and it sounds like a, a lot of issues. So we're just going to go in here. I'm assuming everybody's upset because they can't talk to the ABS. Just a host of codes here. Uh, low battery voltage, a bunch of uh, blend door, research door stuff, low voltage. Uh, PCM lost vehicle speed message and lost common ABS module so that's probably why and then uh, long wheel distance message vehicle speed performance so that's all in the engine computer so engine computer can't see ABS so not happy there key fob stuff low tire pressures fog light switch halo light switch put a jar circuit high which she told us about and then uh, steering angle sensor here uh, lost common ABS module, tip them central gateway, lost common with ABS module, lost com with power uh, master window switch, which she did tell me this driver side window switch does not work. So that makes sense. Low voltage, low voltage, battery codes, these are all stored, a whole bunch of stored codes. The only ones I'm real concerned with are the active codes, um, which we have down through here. So what I'm gonna do, I have the battery maintainer on, you can see we're at 13.9 uh, volts. Um, we're gonna go like this. I know it sounds ridiculous, but evidently the problem that this lady is having is very quick. Okay, so we're coming right back. So it's repopulating the codes. No con with ABS, no con with ABS, no con with ABS. And then this uh, no con with power master, uh, uh, master power window switch rather pretty common on these to lose um com with the uh switch there uh the wires in the door jam have a tendency to break so i'm not surprised with that i'm going to take and shut the key off I'm gonna turn the key back on and start it up i see the braking abs is on however the engine light is not uh probably until we go drive it there we go, so now the PCM has a code. Yep, lost vehicle speed message. Let me see if I shut the key off. Back on, I'm sure a code will mature because you can see they are both pending. So pending, pending. Uh, let's see, that one went to a stored code. Yeah, no engine light. Yeah, we'd probably have to go drive it, but uh, regardless, oh, there they go. They just went active. So if you saw them switch, oops. Got a little click happy there. Uh, let's see, yep, they went active. So the engine light is now back on, ABS lights on. So we're back with what I would consider her original problem, um, despite the driver's door not working. So just because she's looking for a sticker, we're gonna skip everything else. We're gonna focus on why uh, the ABS module is offline. That is the biggest thing. Fixing that will uh, ultimately fix the engine light that is currently wrong with it of course having it not have gone through a whole drive cycle um, that's a problem or potentially could have other problems so let's focus on the no com with the abs which 
uh, works on the same network, if this topology is correct, is, uh, what is that? Oh, that's the airbag, right? Occupational restraint, air occupant restraint. And then you got the wireless control module, that steering angle sensor, yep, steering angle sensor, uh, engine computer, and the TIPM are all on this data bus. So that tells me that, uh, you know, the module's probably not, you know, obviously it's not pulling down the whole network. So let's just uh, go powers and grounds and ability to communicate. And if that's all there, it's going to need an ABS module. Does that make sense to you folks? I'm hoping it does. I know sometimes I ramble a lot and I've been trying to be diligent to not do that so much as I sit here and talk to you. <laughs> um, I see, and sometimes I think this could bog other people down too, is you get a car in and this thing, let's say it's littered with codes like this was what, like 37 codes. You just uh, panic mode. Uh, what I like to do at that point is what we're gonna do right now. We're looking at the customer's main concern. They just want a sticker. They don't care about key fobs and blend door codes and all this other stuff. Granted, is it problems? Maybe. Um, it's not uncommon to plug into a car with no symptoms and have it littered full of codes from problems that had occurred at some point that just you know got stored in the memory. So let's go after the ABS. That If we fix that or we're able to diagnose it and she fixes it or the other shop fixes it, however it goes, that'll restore uh, communication back with the PCM. It'll get the speed signal back. It'll fix her complaint of no speedometer and all these lights, hopefully. So let's get started. So the ABS module lives way down yonder, uh, down there where the light is. That's the ABS module way down there. Uh, connector, I think we're probably going to have to put on the lift to get to it. I got us a diagram here. Uh, let's see, we have one fuse, two fuses. We have two powers. We have this full time power here. Uh, then we have another fused power there, and then another fused power there. So we have uh, a couple powers, looks like a couple grounds, and then of course our communication wires, which I printed this off a, uh, a diagram for that, which uh, is accurate to the topology that was on the YTAC. So before we get super involved, let's um, get a test light here and make sure that we have our fuse, make sure at least the fuse is good. That doesn't mean our power is making it there, but if somebody was fiddling in here, and there's simply a fuse missing. So we need um, M37 first. Uh, let's see here, M37, we'll find that here. M37 says ABS, ESP, fuel pump relay. So that one's probably not bad because it also controls the fuel pump too of some, some sort. Let's find uh, where it lives here. Might have to go get my glasses. Power, power. So we have power on both sides of that fuse and M37. Yeah, M37, which is in this row right here, that's a row of four. So that one's good. So then we have a couple big J case fuses. So J7 and J6. Let's see here. Terrible with the camera work. Power on that side, power on that side, so our fuse is good there. That was J7. And then J6, I believe, was which one? J6. Come on, baby. This one right here. So we'll pop the lid off of it, off from it. That's off. Okay, we have power on both sides of it. So we have both our powers up here, uh, both our full times, and then we have uh, this one here, the M37, I believe it was. Uh, so that's our key power. So that's really all we can do uh, from right here. That's it. Now we have to go get to the connector, check our ground. We all know Chrysler and their grounds, we could have a bad ground. Make sure our powers are there, make sure our grounds are there, and then make sure that we have our uh, can C bus. Make sure we've got some chatter down there on the lines. And if we do, it needs a module. Got a piss spot to unplug this thing. Okay, so we need to make sure our powers and grounds are gonna make it here. Now this is hooked to another wiring harness. I can't get the thing all the way up and out. Um, however, I believe that 
we have powers and grounds. So I think, so let's see. So this is looking at it. I believe this is pin one here on the top left. And pin one should be a power source. And then let me find my other diagram here. So this is 30. So this is one and this is 32. So 32 is also a power source. So both of those should be power sources. And both these bottom ones, which are pin, I think 16 on the bottom left and 47 on the bottom right, both those are grounds. Um, so we're gonna use our high powered test light here. This little guy. And we're gonna probe into the power. And then we're gonna attach the other pin. So we're just gonna very gingerly front probe it here. And we'll just touch it to the brake line. Should light up. And that one lights up. And then we'll do the other one while we're right here. Touch it to the brake line. And it lights up. So both our powers are good. And then we're gonna do our grounds, which typically I would use the same power source, but it's kind of a, given it the one-handed handy here is a little difficult to get the stuff. So we're gonna probe into the grounds. Got two grounds down here. And then I'm gonna go get a jumper wire. We're gonna hook this other pin right here to power on the battery and light it up. Here we go. So we're probed into the ground. This, this wire's hot. So that one's good. And this light draws four amps, so it's good enough for our testing purposes. And that one's good. So both powers, both grounds. Now we still have the switched power source, okay? Uh, that is at pin number, let me find out which one that one is at. That is at pin number eight, right? Yep, so number eight. So that should be on this left side. So if that's one. What do we have here? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the whole baby. That's number eight. Let me uh, see if I can get finagled back here, folks. I'm gonna unhook my battery maintainer. Okay, number eight lights up. Yeehaw! So, we have all of our powers, all of our grounds. Now, we need to see if we have failure to communicate. So that's pins 12 and 13. Let's grab a little scope. Move you out of the way there for a second, folks. So we're gonna go to the can high and the can low, if we can. <laughs> little networking joke for you. So let's see, let me get this undone. And by little scope, I'm at real little scope. The little U-scope. Gosh dang it all the heck. Here we go. Oh crap, I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see. Let me change. I'm gonna change my scale in here. Okay, so there's one side of our data bus. Hopefully you guys can see that without a lot of great detail. Now we're gonna jump up one pin. You should have the other half, which I need to move it down because that's gonna be can high. Bear with me. Okay, so there's, there's our can high. It appears to be functioning at the correct voltage scale. Let's see, because if we're a half a volt per division, there's one and a half, back down, this can low, and there we go. It looks like it's talking, or it looks like the data network is intact to it, which we assumed in the beginning that it would be, simply because everything else was talking on that data network. So we can, oops, change the time here, the sweep on it, and we can watch the little individual data packets. Sorry, folks. I suck at this. Let me uh, bring a trigger down here. I don't know where my trigger's gone. So there. Now you can see the individual data packets being kind of swept across the screen there. Let me get them to hold still for you. So there. That's that's pretty much it, folks. Uh, I know it's kind of a hodgepodge there for you, but hopefully you learn a little something. So at this point, ladies and gentlemen, I feel pretty confident making the call on the ABS module. All the other modules are tattletailing on it, saying, hey, we can't talk to you, we're calling. You can see it's calling. It's talking on the data bus, but it ain't answering. This guy's like, nope, not today. <laughs> uh, it has its powers, it has its ground, it has its keyed ignition source, and it has the ability to communicate. The comm lines are there and it's not you know, dragging down the network or anything funny, so it simply needs an ABS module. If I remember correctly, 
I think I did a video on one of these before uh, replacing it perhaps and doing the initialization procedure. Now we don't need the whole hydraulic control unit. We can get just the module and I believe that you can separate it right here without you know bleeding brakes and all that stuff and take it off, slip the new one on, you know, bolt around providing the bolts come out. Which these look pretty scary. <laughs> so I don't know that for a fact. Uh, but at this point We'll have to give it back to the customer. We'll give it back to our shop, however she wants to do it. They can, you know, fix it, whatever. We can bring it in, reinitialize it, program it, and uh, and then she can carry on with the procedure of trying to get a sticker. The car's going to need to be driven, get the drive cycle done, but fixing that should resolve the issue of the no-coms, and it should also resolve the issues um, with the speedometer. However, it will not fix the driver's side window. So. Uh, I'm gonna have to get a hold of her. I don't know if she wants to get into get into that. Like I said, I'm pretty sure priority one is just uh, the inspection sticker and just the ABS and engine light stuff required by the law. Like gravity, it's the law. And I wish there was a law for you guys who are in that comment section. So I didn't have to keep telling you, but go down there to Insty, the Facebook, the bell. Forgot about that. Subscribe, all that stuff. And just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.